everybody, thanks for tuning in. This tutorial is going to be on Rose Etude number four, Allegro. So just like the previous couple of videos, um, I just want to reiterate that you want to make sure that you're playing in the right character for the piece. So right at the very beginning, you have Allegro. Allegro is a rapid, lively tempo. And so to me, that means that it has to have some motion to it. And um, you wanna play this, um, you know, pretty, pretty quick. So it feels like it's moving along. And so character wise, I like to imagine this as, you know, like you're, you're sneaking along and maybe being chased by someone. And I say sneaky because if you look at your dynamic at the very beginning, you have piano and um, piano is like the only thing you have until the second line from the bottom. And then you have forte and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to tell you some of the things I like to do in this to um, make it sound a little bit more fun and lively. Um, and that also means that I don't necessarily always play piano throughout the entire thing to the end. So now if we take a look uh, through this, um, you know, you've got this main mo motive going throughout. So um, that, you know, comes out here and there throughout the whole piece. Um, and then it comes back out. And then you have these two note groupings that, of, of just cascading 16th notes. And that comes up a lot. And this etude is just, it's, it's basically an etude in, hey, let's figure out how to play evenly with the most awkward little note groupings um, we can think of. And also don't forget, play it fast. <laughs> so um, one of the things that I'll do, um, so like, for example, these four note groupings are frequently rushed through, especially the first two notes. And that simply isn't, you know, correct. And also it just sounds a little bit elementary. So one thing you can do to kind of even that out is give the downbeat of each of those four note groupings just a little bit of an accent, or you could think of it as a tenuto um, to just elongate it a little bit. You could also think of it as being something of um, a more expressive quality rather than a you know robotic computerized like da -da 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 -dum. so if you make it a little more expressive um, then all of a sudden it has a little bit more life and a little bit more of a human quality to it um so if you fast forward a little bit um you know the the let's see the two note groupings be up up be up up be up up be up up same issue we always want to rush through the first note in those so if you give them a little bit of an accent they're the more interesting notes in this measure too it's the third measure here um you know you want to bring those out be up up be up up be up up be up up and going back to this whole like sort of sneaky being chased or maybe chasing someone kind of aspect it makes it sound a little bit more exciting and gives it some more mm, something special um so let's see so we go through be up be up be up be um fourth measure is the first time we have the two notes slurs side by side dia 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 dum and um Again, that's just a recipe for unevenness. And if you listen to my recording throughout, um, you know, I do my best to make sure that everything is very even, but you can still hear, um, even after all the time that I've worked on this, just like little things here and there where I rush through um, uh, without meaning to. So um, just be careful of that. Um, so my main advice for that is to just make sure that Everything you play has an expressive quality about it, and then you will be less likely to rush through the passage. 
Um, and then if you skip forward, let's see, to the sixth measure for the next one, two, three, four, five measures, one, two, three, four, five, six measures, um, you have these two note slurred groupings going and, oh man, this is the first time we have these repeated notes going too. And I've actually discovered that the big problem here, aside from rushing through the first note in the group, is also, um, slowing down. Um, boom. So if you slow down too much, obviously your engine is going to stop. Um, so another analogy I like to use for this is like being on a train. So then you get to the sixth mother. Did I just say mother? I meant measure. Getting ahead of myself. Anyway, you go to the sixth. Go to the sixth measure of this and if you just imagine this as being like a chicka 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 then it makes it a little bit more difficult to slow down now um i'm going to show you a couple of the intervals that uh, my fingers really love to rush through so if you zoom in here um the a to g sharp I don't know if everybody has this problem, but I have a huge problem with this. So I try to elongate the A just a little bit. Um, I'll even phrase to the A. So if you do that and you give that A a little bit more importance in your phrase, then all of a sudden something that was technically very difficult becomes musically expressive and so much easier to execute. Um, so that's one of the tricks I'll do. Um, another interval, and this comes up periodically, and it's something that I personally have to focus on quite a bit, um, uh, is the evenness of my ring fingers. So, you know, like the E to Ds um, in the upper register and like the D to Cs in the lower register. Uh, the ring finger is the weakest finger. So, um, you know, if you do like finger strengthening exercises like Vade Makeum, it can be really helpful in, um, you know, in mastering that finger technique. Um, another thing you can do is just practice, like squeezing a stress ball. You don't want to overdo it, but um, I have found that this kind of helps develop, you know, these muscles in my hand and my fingers. And the other thing that you want to do if you're doing little finger exercises is exercise the uh, outside parts of your fingers because sometimes we rush through lifting um, for example the very first measure lifting between E and F so one thing um, that my doctor actually showed me is she actually told me to um, exercise the outside of my hand with uh, vegetable rubber bands because they're a little bit um, you know they're a little wider and there's a little more resistance and so um, when I was struggling with um, the possibility of getting tendonitis in my fingers, she suggested I exercise the outside muscles of my hand as well. And so uh, three sets of 15 with this little resistance band and check back with my doctor after a few weeks of doing that on my own and it really helped a lot. So that's another thing you could do is just work on strengthening the muscles in your hand. Um, and that's something you can do, you know, outside of just clarinet. But bottom line is the best way to get better at clarinet stuff is to just practice clarinet stuff. And so um, Vade Makeum is a good one for that. And then an etude such as this is a great one, you know, to put that into practice. Okay, so um, in terms of articulation, um, you want to make sure that when you articulate, the tip of your tongue is touching the very top of the tip of the reed. Um, so you want to avoid striking the reed with the center of your tongue. So some people will anchor their tongue like on their lip and then actually like wow, wow, with their tongue somewhere in the middle. Um, you know, while that helps you keep a very high tongue position, it makes your articulation sound a little bit 
I like to call it foofy or fuzzy or a little bit uh, lacking in clarity. So make sure that you're using the top of the tip of your tongue to do this articulation. The other thing is to make sure when you start playing that the air is right there at the front of your mouth as soon as you release the reed. Um, it's really easy on clarinet to just kind of sneak in with your air. But if you do that, and then you won't get any clarity in any of your articulation at all. So just imagine your body is like a balloon and the tip of the tongue is like the very front part of the balloon. So when you inhale and you let go, all of the pressure that has built up in your body lets the air relax out at a very high speed. Um, and so relaxing is also key. Um, so air support comes from the lower abdomen, right? And that's how you get the air to come out super fast. Um, but you wanna maintain a very relaxed throat, a very relaxed chest when you do this. Um, so one of the things that I'll do is I'll just practice blowing. Um, taking a nice deep breath and then blowing a full stream of air. So, um, you know, imagine you're just like a balloon being blown up. And try to blow air as fast as you can from the moment you release the air from your lungs. Don't hold your breath in your throat. Don't try to hold back your air in your chest. Just breathe in and you try that a few times and then you can add some articulation. All the while trying to blow as fast of air as you can. One of my friends, um, he likes to teach his students to pretend um, you're blowing out a birthday candle. Um, and I think that's a great analogy. Just make sure you're not puffing out your cheeks, right? <sighs> and, um, you know, just for fun, you could even test your airspeed with a real candle and put it on your desk and see if you can blow it out from far away. Um, I've actually done that before and it's, it's a, it, you know, it's very humbling if you're, if you're not used to blowing with really fast air. So it can work very well. So we've covered articulation, we've covered air. Okay, so now some of the more expressive things. Um, you know, if you listen through to when I play it um, in this first section, um, I like to put in um, a little bit of dynamic contrast here and there. And at the end of the first four lines before that first fermata, I really like to do a nice big fat crescendo all the way to the end of that low E so that the low E can really project and sound nice and full. Um, and that contrasts really well with um, the lighter kind of style uh, when it switches from A minor to C major. And the next little section um, in C major, um, you know, you can play a little bit softer, um, but that also builds up a little bit. And, um, you know, for two and a half lines, and I like to actually really crescendo to that A, B, 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 A, Ba -da -ba -dum. And it leads you to a nice big giant rest. Um, you can actually turn the rest into part of your phrase. And so I like to crescendo through that. And I like to um, compare it to like imagine um you know imagine you're like riding your bike in the mountains or something and all of a sudden uh, like clearly you were really dumb and you went too late in the day and a storm you know just like all of a sudden came up and you're like oh my god i have to get out of here as soon as possible but visibility is like really terrible so you're like you're like going through the trail and you're like thinking like you're biking and you're going so fast downhill and you're like okay i think i turned here but at some point you like take a wrong turn by accident and then you do this like evil knievel thing where you like just go off the cliff for a second and then you land and you keep going and somehow you survive that I wouldn't recommend actually trying that for real. But anyway, that's what I kind of envision. Like you're just like, for a moment, you're just airborne. 
and then you land and you continue the phrase. So that's what I like to do here and I think it makes it a little bit more fun. Um, so you have these um, fermatas here and there and um, you know I like to think of these as you know just a moment to really think about how you're going to breathe. Like Rose is like giving you permission to stop and think about what you're gonna do before you do it. Um, and so, you know, even when you listen to my recording, I'm like thinking, you know, about my mental representation of what it means to actually take a good, full, wholesome breath before I play. And, um, you know, that's what this is for. Um, maintaining that sort of relaxed focus throughout the entirety of the phrase. This like bottom section after the one, two, three, the third fermata, that like whole measure fermata, um, <coughs> for whatever reason, it's really hard for me to play this one super evenly. Um, so I try to make this a little bit more legato, a little bit more vocal, almost like I'm, you know, trying to emulate some sort of operatic um, piece or something. Um, and so that has kind of enabled me to make this sound a little bit better than um, just pushing buttons. Um, and then this final like coda section here where you have a real forte. I like to think of this as more of like a maestoso, very majestic sort of finish. And, you know, perhaps, um, you know, if you're envisioning um, running away from something, you finally made it to safety and you're back at home. Or, you know, if, uh, what was, I forgot the other thing I, I suggested this being about, but anyway, um, you know, you finally made it to home and you're settled down in this last little bit. You're just kind of thinking about reflecting on the events of the day. And it just kind of disappears. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. There really aren't any tricky fingerings in here aside from just playing stuff evenly. You've got this weird trill thing toward the end and there's not really a good way to do it and sound good at the same time so I just trill it slower that G sharp that high G sharp to A um you'll see some people try to cheat and leave the pinky on the G sharp key but that that cheat is like actually a terrible idea because it sounds really sharp try to do the cheat fingering um, from G sharp to A because it will not sound good. Um, just, you know, put, <laughs> just pretend there's some tape between your ring finger and your pinky and just kind of trill, you know, with them together. And then think about your grace notes before you play them and have them lead into the next beat. Um, make sure they don't stop. Beat up, bum, beat it up. And again, you don't have to make this crazy fast um, if your fingers can't do it. Um, it just has to sound musical. That's pretty much it that I have for this etude. Um, I hope that, you know, my thoughts about the music and the technique and the breathing and art articulation and everything will kind of help you execute a more musical and more comfortable performance while you're preparing this. Thank you so much for watching and please, don't forget to subscribe if you like what you hear, and as always, happy practicing.